Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the fourth match between Rancor and Thebus. Thus far, Thebus taking two matches, Rancor taking the last one. This is going to be on Aztec, which I believe favors Rancor's style of play just because that natural expansion, first of all, prone to aggression, but secondarily, if you lose control of that natural expansion, that can be the game. Rancor showing that he effectively can out-aggress Thebus in the right circumstances, and certainly did so in the previous match. So making a match of it, let's see if he can turn it around. Thus far, though, I gotta say, Thebus is looking somewhat sharper overall. And it almost felt like just the amount of chaos that Rancor was able to create suited him in the previous match. Still favoring Thebus over the overall, but Rancor showing that he might be able to steal this match. By the way, before I get too ahead of myself, this is BSL Season 13 Hasu League Round of Eight quarterfinal. So I think the other way to say that. I prefer the round of eight because it lets you know there's there's like eight players versus quarterfinal and then the semifinal and you kind of got to think about it a little bit. Anyway, Rancor dropping a spawning pool. So going for a nine pool opener. Wants to get aggressive with Zerglings right off the bat, which I'm not surprised. Supply Depot being built on the low ground currently for Thebus. Does have the barracks to the side. The Overlord is heading to... We'll see if this Overlord gets in the proper scouting position. Looks like there was a drone trick behind this to go ahead and put Rancor in the red overall. And so I just have to assume that Rancor is going to build the initial six Zerglings and play the game from there, just knowing his style. Phoebus scouting out. Let's see if he makes his way to the bottom right-hand corner first. It'll help him knowing that Zerglings are on the way. It looks like he is, unfortunately, is going to be scouting to the bottom left initially. So and let's see if we do, in fact, get six Zerglings. I can't imagine we wouldn't. So there's the initial six Zerglings being produced. The barracks is on the low ground. The Overlord coming out from a corner angle. Now, Rancor can be a lot more aggressive with this Overlord than he would usually be. Because if, with the six Zerglings out, even if Marines engage that initial Overlord, that Marine would be sacrificing its life to engage it. Currently, second hatchery down, Rancor doesn't know the direction to send any of his troops just yet. The Overlord trying to make its way here. So the Zerglings currently do not know which direction to head. And it looks like they are making their way to the left. They're going to be able to at least find this SCV. And repositioning now that the Overlord sees the SCV and the Marine to the, to the right-hand corner. But you can see Thebus reacting immediately, getting a bunker down, seeing those Zerglings on the way. He does have two Marines up. Also grabbing a gas, so he wants to follow this up with a potential mech build. He's going to be able to go ahead and get scouting information in the midst of this. But the bunker, nice reaction on Thebus's part. He's going to be able to get that bunker up before the Zerglings enter the base. And it looks like the Marine's safely able to enter. Second barracks going down. Interesting play. So grabbing gas and a second barracks. An academy immediately. So he wants to go for a potential bust himself off one base upon seeing this opener. Gas is being mined. Let's see if Rancor adjusts to this play. I like Thebus' and again, Thebus showing early game regression. The Marines pulling out. This suggests potentially an early Firebat bust, early Medic Marine bust, two hatch play in the meantime for Rancor. The one disadvantage of this is, is grabbing this gas uh, a little bit earlier and playing off one base. That's going to make things a little bit more challenging. Should there be a Mutalisk follow-up. The Marine's now moving out. Actually, he's just going to run out with the five Marines and an SCV. Maybe trying to catch an Overlord? Something out on the front door. No, okay, now he's going to go ahead and grab that natural expansion. So, cutting, it looks like, cutting Marine production. Now getting an initial medic out, just to make sure he didn't have to worry about the early Ling Flood, but Lair just about finished. Rancor playing it a light economy to start. He's grabbing a third hatchery, so it looks like he's opting to move towards three hatch play. There is going to be an earlier comsat for Thebus, having that earlier academy down. Still, no movements towards engineering base, so it's going to be a while before we see that weapons one upgrade, but now he's holding that low ground ramp. So that was kind of an interesting opener, I like. So it slowed down his economy a bit. But it did give him options to deal with early game Link Floods. Stimpak, about halfway finished. Third hatchery and the Spire in that back corner being Mort. Zerglings 
fanning out just to engage potential SCV scouts. And now the Medic Marines moving forward. And it's interesting because this is a kind of one of those standard bus procedures. First something colony being planted. It looks like they're checking for a third base. This is a potential opportunity. Oftentimes you would, in the old three hatch style play, you'd see a full grouping of, of Medic Marines just pressing and attacking the front. Looks like stimming forward. Curious how they saw the Marines to notice stim there. But stimming into the Zerglings there. Able to do a little bit of damage. There's a Comsat there. Sorry, by Phoebus. Looks like he is going to see the Spire. Getting high ground location. So I, I have to assume he's scattered it in between there. Sun, Sun Colony being planted and morphing. And more Zerglings being created to try to defend this. This is going to slow down Rancor's economy a bit. One Marine down. Carapace 1 being upgraded. It looks like he does have the Spire finish, but he's delaying Mulisks a bit. And I have a feeling Rancor, yeah, it's just going to go for a big Muta Ling bust as far as a follow-up. He's certainly going to have to rely on Mutalisks in the mid-game. Usually if you get all those something colonies down, that's the position you want to be in. The Zerglings running forward, going to catch Marines without medic support and actually blocking them out from the bunker. Sorry, there is one medic there, but there's enough Zerglings where they able to wipe out that attack force. Now peeling back, looks like they're going to get another... Marine potentially still working on that second Marine. That Marine able to slide into the bunker, but the Zerglings making their way back into the main. There's no Marines in this bunker currently. And Rancor, interestingly, he's got that Spire just... And he's even getting the level one Carapace. I'm wondering if he's going to go for a greater Spire build here because he is skipping... So he's got the Hydralist End being built, but he is skipping tech altogether. Has a Queen's Nest down and is going immediately to Hive off 2 base. Building a single Mutalisk in this stack and just Zerglings otherwise. Very unusual Zerg play. Phoebus losing a handful of those Marines. There's no way he can really pressure this. So it's the question is, is, is he going to be in position to deal with the follow-up tech? A lot of this, the answers to that are in the starport. He's getting that factory down. That's about halfway finished. Also planting some turrets here and there. Zerglings checking out that 9 o'clock base. Rancor keeping it economically light. He's still at 25 workers. Grouping up another attack force that looks like potentially. Just, a, again, a handful of Mutalisks. And I'm almost wondering if this Mutalisk is just for scouting purposes. Second Medic Marine Ball in position. Scooting around. Another Compsat dropped by Phoebus. Looks like he is finding the Zerglings around this corner. Able to kill a handful of them and actually weed through the rest of them. The Mutalists diving forward, looking to get a surround. The Zerglings able to get in the patch. Thebus in full retreat. The Medics getting broken up from the rest of the attack force. But it looks like he's just going to back off. This is honestly just time that Rancor wants to build. And again, I think he's going to go for a greater greater Spire play here. So Hive is finished. Still is that Queen's Nest. He is building Hydralisk Speed. He's now at, still at 2 base. So pushing the tech, playing a little bit light otherwise. Starport about halfway finished, and it is going to be double Starport. Phoebus just now grabbing his third barracks. And floating that factory to kind of cover this back area, which would definitely help against that style of attack. So Rancor has a lot of tech. He's way behind economically, though, as far as just raw workers. You have seven Mutalisks that are looking to peek around a corner. Rancor, which is kind of an unbalancing style of play here, able to pick off an SCV in this back corner, get a turret, and he actually might be able to get... Some SCV kills out of this. More Mutalists grouping up. Marines coming piecemeal into this. Okay, Micro from Rancor. Picking off some Marines as they're trying to go through that gap. Phoebus having trouble getting in position. So losing a lot of Marines in this grouping. And some nice Micro from Rancor. And nice decision making. As far as engagement point. Now he wants to preserve these Mutalists health. And actually pull them back. As soon as a sizable attack force engages this. Because he is getting that Greater Spire in the background. And he's going to want some Mutalisks to be able to morph in between here. Eating a lot of damage. Still sitting in the midst of this. But the Medic Marines are there. A lot of damage on the rest of this balls. You just going to... I wonder if he's just going to go for a... If he's just trying to buy his time and go for a combo 
Ling Hydra Muta something attack now. Backing off. Another CompSat dropped. Oops. By... At both locations. Sees the Greater Spire. And he has... Yeah. He's already anticipated this. So Thebus already getting the Wraith. To try to deal with this attack. And you can see Thebus being forced to kind of adjust. To a very unusual playstyle from Rancor. He's grabbing a third Starport. To go anti-air. But the thing is, is with the Hydralisks underneath this, as far as a counterattack, he's using Phoebus's reactivity against him. So he's showing Greater Spire. Okay, he is in fact morphing some Guardians, but there are Hydralisks underneath this, an Overlord nearby to deal with potential Cloak. Cloak is now being researched. I have a feeling these Guardians are going to be in position to attack before Cloak is really there. If the Wraith can pick off that Overlord, that could be the difference in this attack. It looks like they are picking away at this Overlord on the front. That's going to be significant. Hydralis moving in position. Rancor wants to end the game now. The Guardians grouping up on the front with Zerglings and Hydralisks. So the Guardians are there to take care of the Marines. The Hydralisks are there to take care of potential Wraith threat. And it's going to be an all-out attack on the front door. The Marines and Medics backing up. The Hydralisks engaging. The Zerglings flooding forward. Here are the Wraith. Before Cloak is finished. The Zerglings on top of the bunker. And Rancor with this very mixed aggressive force. He needs to win it with what he's got. All of the Wraith being picked out of the air before Cloak finishes. There's GG from Phoebus. And Rancor with a very unusual mixed attack. Build order all over the place. Again is able to get the front door bust. Well played on his part. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to go to a game five. Hope you guys have enjoyed this series thus far. Thanks for listening.